In this video, we're going to look at kernels in some more detail. So we first of all need to start off with letting phi be a ring homomorphism from R to S. And I want to stress that we don't know anything about the rings R and S. These two rings, they may be commutative, they may not be commutative, they may have a multiplicative identity, they may not have a multiplicative identity. Uh, one or both of them might have some zero divisors. One or both of them might be fields. So we really don't know anything about these two uh, rings. But what I do want to do is I want to ask the question, What, if anything, can we say about the kernel of phi? Now, I do want to start with uh, recalling some facts that we already know about kernels. The first one is we know that the kernel is a subset of the uh, domain ring, which is called R here. It's the domain of the function. So we know that the kernel is part of the ring R. And in a previous video, we also have shown that phi of the zero element inside R has to be the zero element in the target ring S. So this particular thing says uh, that the kernel of phi cannot be the empty set. Now, one thing that I know about uh, non-empty subsets of rings is that we can always ask the question, is a non-empty subset of a ring a subring? So that raises the obvious question, is the kernel of this ring homomorphism a subring of the ring R? Well, to answer that question, we're going to look at the subring criteria theorem. So let's actually examine the subring criteria theorem. So our question is kernel of phi a subring of R? Well, the thing that we need to do is we want to look at two elements inside that kernel. And uh, the idea is we want to look at whether or not the difference a minus b belongs to the kernel. And we want to know whether or not the product a times b belongs to the kernel. Because if the answer to both of these is yes, then we know that the kernel of phi is a full-fledged subring of the ring R. Well, let's see, how do we go about doing this? Well, uh, we simply look at, to, to figure out whether or not this element is inside the kernel of phi, we're simply going to let phi eat that element and see what happens to it. So uh, we're going to start with this idea. If I look at phi of a minus b, that's going to be phi of a plus minus b, because that's just what minus means inside of a ring. And because phi is a ring homomorphism, this is phi of a plus phi of minus b. So this is because phi is a ring homomorphism. But uh, we also know that if I have a ring homomorphism, phi takes additive inverses in R to additive inverses in S. In other words, phi of minus B is minus phi of B. So this is also because phi is a ring homomorphism and we've previously shown in a previous video that ring homomorphisms take phi of an additive inverse into minus phi of the original element. Uh, but what I now want to notice is that um, 
we know that, and I'm going to put this in a different color, we know A is inside the kernel of phi, and we know B is inside the kernel of phi. And so that tells me that phi of A is the zero element inside S, and phi of B is the zero element inside S. And when we use these two facts, that tells me this element here is nothing more than the zero in S, and this element here is the zero element in S. So we have zero in S minus zero in S, which is just zero in s. And so the upshot of all of this is that phi of a minus b is equal to the zero in s, and so that says a minus b must belong to the kernel of phi. And we're halfway done with showing that uh, the kernel is a subring of the ring R. The first property of the subgroup criterion has been satisfied. So let's turn our attention to the second property. Let's look at this. Uh, since we have A and B inside the kernel of phi, let's uh, look at, so, so we're going to assume that, uh, look at phi of a times b. Well, phi of a times b will be phi of a times phi of b. But again, uh, what we know is that phi of a is equal to the zero in s, phi of b is equal to the zero in s, and that's because a and b are known to be inside the kernel of phi. And so consequently, we know that this guy is zero, and we know that this guy is zero, so we can continue and say, well, let me get the right color, we can continue and say that phi of a times b is equal to the zero in s times the zero in s, but zero times anything is equal to zero, so we get that phi of a b is equal to zero. So that tells me a b belongs to the kernel of phi. So at this point, we have satisfied both criteria in the subring criteria theorem. So both criteria in subring, let's make that more readable. So both criteria in the subring criteria theorem are satisfied and hence we can say that the kernel of phi is indeed a subring of the ring R. Now I want to tie this particular video up with a question which you will be investigating in a quickly jot assignment. So a question. We know that the image of phi is a subset of the target ring. We also know that phi of R0 is equal to Rs, so 0 in S is clearly an element of the image, so we know that the image of our ring homomorphism is not empty. And so the question becomes, is the image of a ring homomorphism a subring of the target ring named S. And you will be investigating that in a quickly jot assignment.